May 20th, 2016, Friday of the seventh week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the letter of St. James. Do not complain, brothers and sisters, about one another, that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing before the gates. Take as an example of hardship and patience, brothers and sisters, the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Indeed, we call blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of the perseverance of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, because the Lord is compassionate and merciful. But above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath, but let your yes mean yes and your no mean no, that you may not incur condemnation. The word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm. The response is, The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. He pardons all your iniquities. He heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever. The Lord is kind and merciful. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord is kind and merciful. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus came into the district of Judea and across the Jordan. Again, crowds gathered around him, and, as was his custom, he again taught them. The Pharisees approached him and asked, Is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, What did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. The Gospel of the Lord. May 20th, Friday of the seventh week of Ordinary Time, the Memorial of St. Bernardine of Siena. The first reading comes from James 5, 9 to 12. This is a continuation of James's letter, and it's a series of sayings, a series of instruction. In Paul's letter, this would be called a paranesis, the last minute instructions before he finished the letter. So he says, don't complain against each other, don't cast judgment on each other, but rather be patient. It's better to put up with bad things rather than create division within the community. Now this has to be taken with caution because we shouldn't allow ourselves to be a welcome mat that everybody's walking all over us. Rather, if we feel that it's for the better of the other, that a fault be presented to that person, we should say it. But this is not so much that we can have our rights, but that the good of the other person is recognized. James speaks about the patience of Job. Now the patience of Job is interesting because Job is really only patient for about two chapters of the book. For 38 chapters, there's complaining and moaning. But this is a saying that has been used 
patience of Job that we should put up with things patiently and not be always angry, not always reacting. And then James closes with the idea that we shouldn't make oaths under the heaven. Remember, in Jewish oaths, the people would call upon the life of God and say, if, if I'm lying, may God die. And that's wrong, because that's manipulating God, using him as an object to show other people that we're telling the truth. And if we're lying, we're effectively cursing God. So what we should do is simply say yes or no. We should be people of integrity, that people can see that we're telling the truth. The Gospel is from Mark 10, 1 to 12. The Jewish leaders asked Jesus about divorce. Jewish law allowed divorce, but Jesus says that Moses only allowed this because of the hardness of people's hearts. People should not divorce because when you enter into a marriage, you make a covenant. And Israel had made a covenant with God. God was always faithful to his covenant. We should follow God's example. Now part of the reason against divorce too was the fact that Jewish men often oppressed their wives in divorce. They were allowed to divorce a woman if she burned his meal once. That was a sign that she had displeased them. And Jesus wants women treated with respect. Jesus closes off this passage by saying, The man who divorces a wife and marries another is guilty of adultery. And if the woman divorces her husband and marries another, she's guilty of adultery. Now notice in this particular passage, the woman is allowed to divorce. That wasn't allowed in Jewish law, so obviously this passage has been tweaked a little bit so that it could fit a pagan audience. Mark is writing especially for Jewish Christians, but he's writing in Rome, so already part of the Christian community is Gentile Christian. They would have the practice where a woman could divorce her husband. In either case, if she divorces and marries somebody else, that person is guilty of adultery. Now what does that mean in terms of divorce and remarriage? That Jesus sees divorce as a sin. Are there ways that we can get around this? In the Orthodox tradition, you're allowed one sacramental marriage, but after that, you're not allowed to marry in the church, but you're given a blessing, up to four times. Remember when Jack Kennedy married Aristotle and Nassus? That was a blessing, not a marriage, and therefore it wasn't recognized by the Catholic Church. Would it be possible that Catholics would adopt something like this? Well, in the last apostolic instruction that the Pope gave after the Synod dealing with marriage, he did say that various national conferences of bishops had to examine this and see if they can find a pastoral way to deal with the people who are divorced and remarried. That, yes, it is a sin to divorce, but every sin except the sin against the Holy Spirit can be pardoned. Is there some way that this can be dealt with? We don't have the answer yet. But the Church Fathers are working on it, seeing if some response can be made so that both the sanctity of marriage and the pastoral need of those who are divorced and remarried can be respected. And may God bless us.